Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss something a little bit more unusual about our own planet. An unexpected discovery that, once upon a time, and specifically approximately 500 million years ago, Earth extremely likely had a set of rings. Rings not so different from the ones around Saturn, and rings that eventually had an extremely similar fate. They basically disappeared, falling onto the planet. And so let's discuss this somewhat unusual new proposition and all of the evidence behind this, while also connecting this to several events that happened on our own planet around the same time. And I guess let's start with the period itself. If it happened, when was this and what was Earth like back then? Well, based on a lot of geological studies, we think Earth potentially resembled something like this. This was during the so-called Middle or Division period. Here's actually a maybe a slightly better picture that shows us some of the continents. And during this period, most of the complex life resided in the oceans. Some of the strangest life resembled these very bizarre cephalopods known as endoceras that were basically kind of like squid wearing extremely long hats. But we also know that around this time, most of this life suddenly disappeared. This was one of the more well-known mass extinction events, referred to as Ordovician Silurian extinction that eventually led to an extremely important event referred to as Great Ordovician Biodiversification. As the name implies, this was when a lot of life suddenly started to diversify, producing an enormous amount of species that then started to colonize the land. And though we know about all of this from a lot of different sediments and a lot of geological observations, the actual triggers or the actual causes of this were not entirely clear. But there's always been that one particular explanation that actually involved multiple meteorite collisions. This is sometimes referred to as our division meteor event, and it's an unusual period approximately 467 million years ago, where for some reason there's an unusual abundance of various impact events on planet Earth. And previously this was suggested to be a result of some kind of a large asteroid, possibly 150 kilometers in size, breaking apart in the asteroid belt maybe because of a collision, with pieces eventually making it to planet Earth for the next 20 million years. Here's actually where some of these craters have been discovered, with all of them occurring in a relatively similar time frame. And so the assumption from these previous studies from approximately 4 to 5 years ago was that, well, maybe these asteroid collisions eventually resulted in climatic changes, resulted in the extinction event, but also forced a lot of life to diversify in order to adapt to these new conditions. But up until this point, or up until this paper, nobody actually made the connection between these asteroids, and all of this was somewhat speculative. But this new paper did something different. The study by Andrew Tompkins, Erin Martin, and Peter Cowood was able to find an extremely unexpected connection. And actually it's a connection between these previous impacts and a few more on other continents. Or in other words, if we were to essentially convert this image to how Earth looked 470 million years ago, we suddenly start seeing an unusual pattern. There's a very significant impact clustering. All of these craters seem to have happened along the equator and not in the higher or lower latitudes. And so here we had an extremely close spacing in time, in space and also along the equatorial line. This was based on 21 craters from around the same time, and all of them were within 30 degree latitude of the equatorial line, with additional evidence from sediments also suggesting elevated levels of meteorite debris confirming multiple collisions. And though at first it was obviously not apparent what could have happened here, eventually the researchers realized that it very likely represented an ancient ring that was slowly falling onto the planet. And that's because it's difficult to explain why all of these meteorites would fall in the same region along the equator and not anywhere else. And so since this only affected an extremely small part of the planet, it would be very difficult to explain in any other way. But naturally this is still very speculative, although definitely not impossible. And not impossible because we know that at least four other planets in the solar system currently contain rings is very likely produced in a very similar way. Here this would involve a relatively large asteroid getting stuck in the orbit around the planet, eventually being tidally disrupted and shredded apart, forming a large set of rings. But just like with Saturn, we know that these rings are not forever and eventually crash into the planet. As a matter of fact, except for the four giant planets, 
It's believed that Mars also had rings at some point as well, and may even have them again when one of its moons gets shredded apart once again. And the previously scientists believed that maybe Earth also had rings during the early period when the moon was being formed after the Theia collision, as you might have learned from one of the recent videos, and at this point we don't even know if the collision with Theia actually happened. But based on this recent research, rings may have existed in the last 500 million years. But the signs of these rings would have already disappeared a long time ago. Mostly because these rings are expected to exist for about 40 million years, which does represent a somewhat similar time frame to various asteroid collisions detected around this period. And so this unusual Ardivisian spike resulting in multiple impacts could have been because of a broken asteroid in the asteroid belt, but it's now looking more likely that all of this was a result of an asteroid being trapped around Earth, eventually forming rings that then fell onto the planet. With the rings surviving for 30 to 40 million years and leaving their mark on the planet still visible in the geological record. Now because the Roche limit for planet Earth, or basically that limit where a typical asteroid turns into rings, is approximately 15,800 kilometers or 9,800 miles above the surface, it means that the rings themselves would have been easily visible from planet Earth and more importantly would have actually cast a shadow. You can kind of see that shadow being cast right there by the rings of Saturn on the Saturn itself. And as you can imagine, that shadow meant that the Earth was not actually getting as much solar illumination. And this could have potentially cooled down the planet. And so in this study, the researchers make another proposition. They actually suggest that the shadow from these rings possibly resulted in one of the glaciation periods that lasted from 460 to 420 million years ago, dramatically cooling the planet and forming enormous ice sheets, even bigger than the ones in the last 3 million years. And because this ring that lasted for about 40 million years seems to correspond to the glaciation period, right now, though speculative, the evidence is still kind of intriguing. But in order to see if this makes sense, more evidence needs to be discovered and more importantly, we need to have modeling. Basically modeling explaining how the asteroid would break up, what exact effects it would have in the orbit around planet Earth, and how this would affect the climate of the planet. And so assuming that the study in this case is correct, this unusual event possibly had an extremely dramatic effect on the planet and of course the evolution of life. But because this is such a big proposition and because there are obviously other explanations, this is still extremely preliminary. And so whether Earth actually had rings, which potentially caused all of these effects, including a glaciation period, or if all of this was a result of some kind of an asteroid breaking apart with pieces eventually crashing on the planet, we're not going to know until future studies. But if one day it does turn out that this is maybe correct, it means that by producing these unusual rings around the planet, through for example some kind of an asteroid redirection, we can actually find a somewhat intriguing way to change climate of planets, for example, scientists behind the study propose maybe one day using this on Venus. So basically by forming Venusian rings, we can dramatically cool down the surface of the planet, possibly triggering an event that can help cool down the planet even more, which would then lead to a dramatic reduction in the atmospheric pressure and basically initiate a kind of a terraforming event. But in some sense, this is all still purely speculative and does require a lot of confirmation. And so until future studies, check out all of the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.